Do that again. Yeah. Get it. Oh. Just, I'll just chug this. Mm. What's in that? <laughs> oh. Let's go. Yeah? Yeah. I am ready to go. You seem so ready. You I'm want me to, always ready. You want me it's to bring ready. a little bit more energy? No. All right. Hold on. You, you, hold on. You no, stay. My you turn. Stay. No, my turn. <laughs> Shit, I hit the button again. <laughs> That's all I got. Mega Dads Live is a mature rated podcast. It's for the Mega Dads, the Mega Moms, but not the Mega Kids. So put on those earmuffs and let's go! You know, you wearing orange. Is it, it's? Would you say it's an auburn? Yeah, like a pumpkinish yeah. thing. I can't wear colors like that. Like I, I have to keep it very plain. I, like I don't know. I get today. too excited. I know. I know. I did this on purpose because I was like, my background's not so interesting. I have to wear something. So this is like a comic book type shirt where it says "Bam" and "Pow" and "Whack" on it. And all that it stuff looks like there's some good. jizz on your right shoulder. Where? Which one? Both of them? Oh, what is that? That oh, one. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Yep. Yeah, that's aesthetics right there. You got to commit. that part of the shirt, or was that just an accident? <laughs> it was <laughs> just an accident. Um, so the craziest thing, <laughs> my daughter has started her morning routine, okay? Okay. So she has developed, like, a little, like, life for herself, and now has, like, a schedule so when she gets up <laughs> you know like kids will be like oh you know let me um brush my teeth or something normal like that so kids she's, kids and tooth brushing <laughs> you know like let's something that's logical right it's like so her part of her new hygiene thing is i need to wash my eyebrows so she's gotten it into her mind that she needs to wash just her eyebrows like that that is a like a thing she wants to do so she makes us give her q-tips and she puts the water on and you know wets it slightly and then just is in the mirror like just water yeah i mean cleanliness is next to godliness and she just kind of wipes her eyebrows and she must do this every morning now like this is part of her her morning routine is washing her eyebrows. And I don't know where she got this. At first I was like, hey, did you see somebody do this on TV or something? And the more I think about it, I think she saw my wife doing makeup and she was just like, oh, let me, this yeah. is what makeup is. And just is like, oh no, every morning I have to do my eyebrows before anything. I can't have my coffee yet. I have to just stop everything and do wash my eyebrows do you ever wash your eyebrows adam i don't i mean i don't have I don't know. how dirty are your eyebrows i don't have You're much you don't no, i don't have much eyebrows like look at look yeah at but they're still dirty you have to clean them up every once in a while do you pluck those things or why is where's your, i just your don't hair? have much eyebrowage like you need some rogaine for your for your eyebrows. for my head for my entire area, area. Uh, you are kind of balding a little i can't bit. i wasn't gonna say anything but kind of Shit, yeah. man, this stuff's falling out. That's why George I'm, Carling. That's why I'm oh. growing it out in the back. I'm like Michael Bolton. I think if I grow it all the way out in the back, it'll make me forget that it's falling out of the top. Um, You're fine. You're I don't fine. know why my eyebrows aren't very defined. I, I, that is a, that is a uh, genetics. That is a feature that has often bothered me. Uh, I try not to think about. It. I thought of coloring them. Like maybe I can take like an Just eyeliner. Just a little pencil. bit. Yeah, not a lot. You Your eyebrows are lot. friggin' magnificent. Oh, yeah. No, I have hair, uh, like, in different places all around my body. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty insane that I I have hair in, in places. Yeah. Are you, are you a very hairy person? Are you, like, a Robin no, Williams? Like, are you Wolfman? I no. I have, like, four hairs on my chest. And, and Interesting. I, like, I've named them. So yeah. <laughs> I don't have like a like hairy chest, right? but my hair on the top of my head grows incredibly fast. Like if I get a haircut, I need another one in like a week or two. Wow. Like it, I just need to keep cutting it. It's it's out of control. 
but then I can't really grow in like a hefty full beard. Yeah. It's kind of like scruffy and patchy. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? I kind of right look like you. Adam a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right there That's with okay. you. We'll just, get there. I don't think we will. I think at this point, <laughs> this I think at this stage, that. like this is it. I'm going to have to glue like some fake stuff on here to ever get anything to come in here. This is All nice. Right, this is nice. This isn't happening. Giving up. That's what Mega Dads is all about. Let's just give up. Mega Dads giving up. Um, you wanna hold on a second here. Let's uh you wanna do this? Mega Dads being super positive. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the good things in our life. Uh yeah. I my son recently we got a letter in the mail from the school district. And he was being he's he was being honored by the school district for his academic achievement. Whoa. And it was it's it's like not like you are the smartest kid in your class, but it's the growth year over year. Like you oh, you you got improved. so much better over this yeah. last year, uh, that your growth is like in the top five percent of kids in your school kind of a thing. Miss and so geniality, yeah outstanding uh we were really super proud of him um again it's not that he's the smartest kid it's just he went from being really fucking stupid to being like average right that's a great life lesson though set the bar super low and then blow him away when you actually start trying there was another child in his classroom who also got this award and she said i'm gonna after this, I'm going to do really, really bad at school for the rest of the year and then yeah. and then improve again next year and get this award, award again. So they're like gaming the system, which to me, yeah. like that's street smarts, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's you that's me? you're learning more right now than you'll ever learn at school, knowing that you can game the system, seeing the deficiencies in the structure that the school is setting forth. Like they're not going to you're never going to get. Yeah, valedictorian, but you're going to get this award from going from dumbass to average or slightly. What do they average. call this award? Uh, the, the good try award. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's like a, a, a award is just a hand. It's, it's just like, like a, a, yeah, it's a teetering yeah, hand. It's, it's one of those teetering perpetual hand motion it, things. It's in bronze. Uh, <laughs> all joking aside, like I, I was never good at school. Like I am a person that has. I didn't want to say anything, Adam, but you didn't have to. I, I that. limped a along academically and got by on my street smarts, and no. that, and that gets you far in life. It knowing, does, knowing how to work systems to your advantage is super important. Um, and anyway, he, he's, he's showed a lot of initiative we went to this big ceremony he got a medal he got went up on stage called his name they actually got our name right i was looking at my leonard. wife i'm like there's no way they're gonna say leonard it's gonna be leonhart lenhart i got lena rod once in my life like <laughs> no way they're gonna say it. they nailed his name which was like the most exciting part of the evening i stood up i'm like Woo! <laughs> but anyway i'm really leonard proud Flynn. i'm really proud of my kids for uh for putting in the effort and elliot did a fantastic job what's That's your super good. positive um so i got a new job <gasps> i was unemployed for a super short amount of time i got a new job uh i feel really good about it um, how much do they pay for hand jobs these days yeah right it's under the bridge uh you know my my boss is wears a pimp hat and has a cane a pimp hat. um yeah there it's it's going well so far it just just started and uh, i think it'll be good so new beginnings so my super positive is get out there just keep trying you know it's it's a rough world out there right you sometimes you don't bounce back and find employment uh you have longer 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 gaps and you know uh, as soon as I started looking for work, I really try to like ask other people, you know, well, what do you need just in case I come across something so I could like kind of push it your way if, if it's not for me or, you know, something that having your strengths in mind. So it's just it's a rough one out there. You hear about all these layoffs in the gaming industry. 2024 in general has been rough, I think, employment wise, but uh, super positive is sometimes there's light at the end of the tunnel and sometimes there's a freight train. So you got to. You got to be careful, you know, it's, so, you know, do your it's, best. I, I've often, it's been, a, we've talked about this. It's been a rough year, right? Yeah. And 
no matter what happens and how bad things are, you can always think, uh, I'm not this guy. I'm going to come. Yeah. yeah and, then, and, and you feel better. Could be worse. You could be this guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it brings me to my uh, quick question. You know, a, a good thing about Mega Dads is we're, we're personalities, but we're people, you know, and, and mm-hmm. we want to get to know each other and our audience. We want to, you know, let them into our lives. So quick question is, uh, what's your dream job? Dream job. Oh, my God. My if dream. You could do, if you could do anything what would it be? I I don't care really what I'm doing, but the more I think about it, it would be nice to work in an environment that's a little more healthy. Like I had said on a few recent episodes is like I went to the Pacific Northwest. Washington State is a be- big, beautiful green uh, place with a lot of nature around. Can you imagine people who work at like a resort? So it's not that you can afford the resort, but, but you're always kind of around the atmosphere. Or if you like work at Disney and it's like, okay, not one of the shittier jobs at Disney where you're like, you know, sweeping up the vomit and stuff like that and, and sawdusting that. But what if you're like in the restaurant and you're like, uh, uh, you know, seating people and you're just always around like uh, people full of joy, you know, yeah. or around nature, something like that. As long as the environment's okay. So many of us work in like, cubicles or you're staring at you know um terrible lighting you know your balding neighbor in the in the cubicle next to you who runs his podcast and talks about games all the time and you got to stare at his ass like what if you're just in a nicer environment you know even if i was working inside of a bathroom as a concierge person and they had like some nice you know slow jazz on there boop, 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 boop. Can't, even can't, that uh, can't beat some good smooth jazz yeah and urinal smell i love it i this this question like i think my answer if you would ask me throughout my life would probably change like every five years there was a point in my life where i wanted to be a comic illustrator there's a point in my life where i wanted to design games there's a you know i i've wanted to do so many things i currently have a job that involves art and design so like that's what i've been aiming for my whole life but if i was to say my dream my absolute dream job would be i would want to be a professional musician Mm -hmm. I think of all of the things that I love, I mean, creating is like my, my thing. Like I've, I'm always making things, whether it's videos and podcasts here or drawing, writing music, performing music. The thing that I have the least amount of time for is the music because you have to isolate yourself, sit down, channel that that feeling, that vibe and write something, right? And that's that's hard to do, especially with kids. And I've kind of lost that over the last decade. Uh, I don't write music as much as I used to. So to have that be your job where you could sit down and be at one with your thoughts and put that into music, I, I would love that. I think that would be my dream job at this point asking me right now today. You know how... You ever see where people like eat food off other people? Like at like it'll be like a fancy restaurant or some weird like sex thing. And it's like there's somebody laying down in front of you and people are, like eating sushi off of you. Ever you ever see that? Like in a movie? I, I saw it once. What? Anyway. <laughs> there, you there wanna be that like, guy? You wanna be uh, the plate? Yeah. I would like to be the plate that people eat things off of. Uh, but the only problem is like I'm very ticklish. So <laughs> I'm afraid that I would like pass gas like on the table like at the wrong time. Uh, if somebody oh, here's a question. Stick. So, what's better to be ass up or or like? <laughs> oh, you can't you can't ass up be a plate, <laughs> Adam. But then not in not in civilized society. I'm talking then, about like a nice restaurant where rich people are paying to have somebody be naked in front of them eating sushi off. Well, I'm not talking about like some schmutz. Right. or whatever the hell okay you got but in. like let's say you are the the you're you're eating right would you rather eat food off of somebody's ass or somebody's sweaty balls like what's the better option? well i guess it, dep- it depends on what you're eating adam like this is what if it's spaghetti I- <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> I just, I need a sound effect because I don't think I could do it right. Of like the slurping of spaghetti, like, like Lady in the Tramp, like, 
Oh. oh my god. Where how did we get here? What happened? I don't know. Where was that <laughs> left turn at? Okay. Yeah. Uh well, let's transition. Uh let's get as far away from that quick question as possible and do our <laughs> nut or no nut. <laughs> <laughs> nut or no nut this is where we take something that's just entered the zeitgeist something that's just been announced and we say if it's doing it for us or not if it's jiggling our chain or not and what was just announced this week was that disney have purchased for 1.5 billion dollars i believe it was an equity stake in epic games so as we know epic games the makers of fortnite um epic the you know synonymous with unreal engine they have created the metaverse it finally happened it was fortnite they have characters from everything in one world and most of the time they're fighting with guns uh and disney has now purchased enough shares where they're going to be able to point epic games in one way or another there was a trailer that came out that basically just said high level Disney and Epic Games get ready. We are creating a new universe with all of our brands like Star Wars, Marvel, Avatar, and we're going to be making games and it's going to have shopping all somehow Fortnite. involved. All within yeah. Fortnite. Well, it's, it, it said doesn't it. say in Fortnite. It's like the thing about what Fortnite is is it is now a platform right. and you can take any character put it in the Fortnite art style and you have your character model and that same character model let's say it's a new one let's just say Geralt of Rivia right you come out with them you put them in Fortnite now he can do all of the animations that you've made over the past how many years so he can do that dance you know that that they had out for like years already because you have the technology melding it's like you have the new character but now we can make him do this and now uh like i was saying in one of our mini podcasts on the youtube channel mega dads on youtube check it out we were talking about how robocop can do a kamehameha move from dragon ball z and it's just seamless because you have everything there the platform is there so what disney does now with this like i'm surprised they didn't just buy fortnite out outright and say we're calling it fucking disney fortnite now or whatever but my question to you adam is now hearing that disney has bought this this huge share of epic games nut or no nut are you excited for this is this a good thing or bad thing what do you think i am very 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 excited about this the disney fortnite relationship has already been very close the Solid. amount the amount of marvel characters and star wars characters there have not there have not been any disney official characters Weird. probably because disney doesn't want Sleeping Beauty running around with a bazooka. Um, yeah. So I think what this means, it's more about, like you said, it's going to be a secondary mode accessible within that Fortnite platform, much like the uh, Fortnite Festival and the Rocket Racing. This is going to be its own thing. Um, I I love it. Honestly, I think it's very exciting that I think some of the coolest things that, that they have done in Fortnite is when those brands aren't just the characters, but the environments. Like there yeah. was a season, there's so a Star cool. Wars season where you're running around Mos Eisley and it's like you were in the cantina and all this Star Wars shit. The, the Mandalorian ship was flying around. So to have dedicated worlds in these properties, can you imagine running around Avengers Tower or, oh God. or like this giant recreation of an indiana jones temple or or pandora right like yeah. that's that's the exciting part is going to be exploring those worlds to me it's almost like bringing that theme park experience into the game the i think that theme park experience in the game yeah i think that's what we're headed towards with this because they've already got a lot of the characters in fortnite so it's not about just plopping more characters in it's going to be about creating a world to bring your characters into and i think that's very very exciting i have to i have to nut for this because you have unlimited money basically um in disney and epic they're both loaded right yep so you have talent 
that you can acquire or that it's already in house and they have a proven formula. So now it's just time. And what I said when I talked to our very own JB, Mega Dad JB, when we were talking about this is the potential is just sky high. So now it's what do you do with it? What types of games or game experiences do you do, do you do with it? Dreamlight Valley is about like a uh, like a community farming sim. You have Fortnite, which is like you have a shooter already there. You have the Rocket Racing, which is of course racing. So it's like we've done the Lego Fortnite. So like where do they go next? Um, what kind of experience do they? roll out and i'm i'm very excited for what that might be possibilities are endless it's super cool i'm really excited and i'd love for their i mean i hope it's like i hope it's like kind of theme park esque that's probably what the shopping is gonna be you know run around pandora and you can buy shit from avatar or whatever but i also kind of hope like i've always looked at the fortnite game and it's a beautiful game that engine is outstanding and i always thought like what if they took this engine and these graphics and made a different kind of game, right? Like I would yeah. love to see a mini Avengers adventure game where you get to pick all the Avengers and play like an action game in that engine. Cause that engine is so capable and so strong. It's versatile. It's so versatile. They could do destruction. You already know that they do, you know, the lasers and lights and fire and every new weapon that comes in, it's like, Oh, can we make a weapon that's a suction cup grappling hook? It's like yes. Can you imagine if they did like a if they did like a Star Wars flight game, right? Like they have vehicles in Fortnite. They have the capability of doing stuff like that. That'd be amazing. It's kind of fast tracking the development too when you have a platform like that. So we might not have to wait long for something to come out. Maybe it's not going to be a five year wait. Maybe it is, you know, two years and we see something that's playable. Uh, I don't know. Very exciting know. stuff. Very, very exciting stuff. Well, let's talk about some of the games that are in the here and now that we have been playing. We're going to start the trip to Silent Hill. Silent Hill, the short message is a horror game developed by Hexadrive and published by Konami. And it's available right now on the PlayStation. This was the Shadow Drop free game from State of Play. It is the return to a standard-ish Silent Hill experience. Uh, Silent Hill has been back. They had that weird um, interactive YouTube show thing that went kind of south. Like, I don't think that was received very well at all, Silent Hill Ascension. Uh, But this is the first traditional game since Konami has brought this property back. And I really liked it. I liked it a lot. It's a two-hour experience. So it's sit down and do it all in one go. Uh, It is very much PT-esque. So if you played PT, um, this this is very familiar. The graphics are presented in a first person's perspective. So you can get up close to the grime and the the fucking gnarly shit that you're going to be seeing in the Silent Hill universe. Um, You are a young girl who gets a text message from your friend beckoning you to meet her at this apartment complex. You show up and pass out and are all of a sudden transported inside where the world starts to go sideways really fast as you are looking for your friend uh, and discovering all sorts of creepy horrors along the way and discovering that things aren't what they seem in traditional Silent Hill fashion. I like this a lot because it is very atmospheric. It sidesteps some of the things that would make this maybe a little more dense. Uh, This is a very stripped down Silent Hill experience. So they they take out combat entirely. There's no inventory management. The puzzles are very, very light. It's an interactive haunted house. Uh, Think more like a layers of fear kind of experience where you're exploring and unraveling the story and then running from some horrible horrible monsters um it's great it's it's great and it's encapsulated like it's just a taste of where silent hill could be going when you look at this game my my main question was it's because you immediately bring up uh you know pt it's not going to reach those heights, right? Like, I feel like it's setting itself up for disappointment when it's such a high bar for fans and you say, hey, this is kind of like this. 
in what ways would you say it kind of hits that tone and what ways does it like fall short do you think people in general are uh, disappointed by what they ended up getting because i didn't see the most positive reactions come up i think that i think that pt is kind of like an un unobtainable it's such an icon right like not only yes. was it uh, a great experience but it was such a unique delivery of it it just came out of nowhere it was a social experiment nobody knew what it was they never even said this is a silent hill game it came out people started playing it and then as they progressed and solved puzzles together uh they discovered it oh this is a silent hill experience so like <laughs> that's that's such a unobtainable thing but there's a lot of stuff in here that calls to mind pt not just the perspective um but the there's a looping mechanic which was present in pt if you played pt you were constantly going around and uh, this this the sequence of corridors and as you would unlock the story you would loop back to the beginning and experience it again from a little different perspective and things would change and you'd solve more puzzles but you kept reliving the nightmare over and over this has that um as you explore and unlock more of what the story is you will wake back up at the beginning again and things are a little bit different and a little bit more dangerous and you're going further down that rabbit hole so it's got that element to it um it visually is just absolutely fantastic uh the, the graphics on display here are really really top notch and what i like about this this particular version is it it takes silent hill norms and it brings them into like modern day so for example silent hill you always have your flashlight you always have your radio and the radio goes off when the enemies come close and it gets staticky and you know that's when the bad guys are approaching well first of all nobody carries a radio nobody carries a handheld radio anymore <laughs> and nobody carries a flashlight but you know what you do have you have a cell phone everybody's oh, got a cell phone modernized so it in this game you're carrying around your cell phone as your flashlight and as enemies approach your cell phone starts to light up and flicker and show creepy images that aren't supposed to be there and that's an indication that the enemies are close by and not only that but it's your communication device to other characters so you'll be getting text messages throughout this game some from your friends some from other things and it's a really great tool it's like an all-in-one tool it's what's progressing the story it's your flashlight which is a silent hill staple and it's your radio all Can you in pick one. up milk <laughs> you know what this game does uh there is a speaker in your dual sense controller oh no and as you're it's walking all creepy and as oh, you're walking no. down these dark hallways and hearing noises <laughs> and seeing things in the distance and then your dual sense speaker will ping with the with the text sound and your phone pops up scares the shit out of you sends chills yeah. right up your spine i love that technology i love it yeah. so great um there are it's not perfect uh like i said there's no combat in the game what they do instead is there are there are pocket chase sequences where you'll get to a point where something is chasing you through a maze you got to get to the end before it gets you otherwise it'll kill you and send you back to the beginning of the chase and the reason that these are a miss is because by nature, as you're running in first person, that can be disorienting. Yes. You add on top of that the fact that you're going through a maze, mm. that's even more disorienting. You add on top of that that your death penalty is to go back to the beginning, that's mm. frustrating. And yeah. then the fourth thing is, um, Silent Hill is known for having its light and dark world, right? You're, you're walking through the real world, and something happens to switch it to the dark world think like stranger things and all of a sudden there's like blood on the walls and chain link fences where there should be doors and you see all these creepy monsters and spooky visuals and stuff that happens during these chase sequences and oftentimes that's the most interesting thing to look at so as you're running you can see things in the distance that are kind of communicating to you part of the story because it's all environmental, but you can't stop and look at it and take oh. it in because you're being chased. Right. And if you stop to look at it, you're dead. And then you got to go back to the beginning. So I found myself often 
like wanting to stop and look at like that looks really interesting and part of yeah. silent hill is the horror is a reflection of your character's story so you see things that are important that you want to pay attention to so that you can better understand what's going on but you can't you cannot so stop. like some pacing issues yeah gameplay elements just not really panning out completely i see and it's kind of like that's that's <clears throat> like the end of a chapter is like a chase sequence so you'll do a story beat you'll learn a little bit more and then you'll get chased by the thing you get to the end of the chase and that's when the loop occurs that i talked about previously the chase sequences are the the weakest part of this game by far uh and especially the final one which I guess would be, I guess would be the final boss. It's you have to be running through this chase, this maze, and you have to find things. There's like six things Ugh. you have to find, oh, no. and you don't know where there are. And there's no Panic. way to, there's Panic. no, there's no waypoint telling you which way to go. I retried and retried and retried that thing probably a dozen times, and I was getting pretty pissed to the point where I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna finish this, but I'm glad that I did. I powered through it. Uh, it's a great little two-hour experience that really really gets me excited for the future of Silent Hill the fact that they they brought it back in a in a way that feels familiar and new and fresh and Akira Yamaoka does the soundtrack this the Silent Hill staple returns he's got a song at the end and it just feels so right and um, it's not perfect but it's free and it feels like Silent Hill is back I am very excited and I I, I want to get outside my comfort level you know my comfort zone with these games so if i do end up making the plunge to switch to the playstation ecosystem i think silent hill has to be some of the first stuff that i experience and uh you know for someone who's just a scaredy cat like me i just i it, i think it'll hit extra hard what they're trying to do it's it's a tough thing to take such a beloved franchise and try to modernize it create new experiences about it um, got a lot to prove because it's yeah, been gone forever it's, it's an uphill battle, this one, this whole franchise. So we'll see. All right, let's talk about something a little more cuddly, a little more friendly. That's Pal World. Pal World is a crafting sim slash Pokemon uh, love letter developed and published by Pocket Pair. It's available now yeah. on Xbox and PC. Yeah, so. What is this game? I wasn't going to play this game for a number of reasons. It just, I'm not really into the, you know, Pokemon these days. Um, I've played a billion, like, uh, indie crafting sims for just a few minutes and then bounce because I'm like, I've done this. Nothing is too fresh here. Um, and I wasn't going to play the game. Uh, it's available on Game Pass. And I forgot why I actually started. A buddy of mine was playing and i was like all right fine we're gonna have a game night where we're gonna experience this together and we are jumping in and my perception of this game completely changed within 15 minutes of of booting it up so the first thing one of the big reasons why i did not want to play the game was there are allegations that ai was used and i'm yeah. a big anti-ai person uh, i'm gonna fight against this like an old man you know shaking his fist up at the sky because i think it's just going to be so destructive and it already is in so many areas so seeing that type of thing um there the alleg there are allegations at this point right now and the ceo of this studio of this developer uh, at pocket pair talks a lot about ai and they there's allegations right now that they've used ai to take the idea the models of pokemon and that is one of the ways that they made them look so similar i'm not sure um i finally played it right so getting past the stigma of that there's the also stigma that they've ripped assets and themes and music and sound effect all sorts of things from other games so it's a crafting sim at heart you spawn into a world that is not procedurally generated found that out later and it has this cartoony art style and you have your main character and the whole crux of it is that you are starting from nothing and you need to collect the rocks and wood and uh, little crystals and all these items from the world to begin to craft and farm and build 
uh, simple structures and different things that will build up your community, your little base. So that's the crafting side of it. Then all of a sudden, um, well, apparent from the get, is when you spawn into the world, there are Pokemon-esque creatures called pals, and they look adorable. There are little monkeys running around. There are little, there are a huge mammoth with like leaves all over them that is like the the grass type like huge like monster things there are uh, there's a a a pal called depresso who's just like a cat who looks like depressed and he's just walking (laughs) around all the time and the world immediately feels alive because not only are you seeing nice trees and mountains in the scape you know it looks it looks great the water it's the little animals are everywhere everywhere and they're interacting with each other they're interacting with the world they're fighting they're uh everything feels so alive and they do look very much pokemon-esque so yeah. that stigma of is this game a rip it is it, it is the 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 character the pals look some of them look so so uncanny to a type of style that you would say either this looks exactly like the cat they made from Mm. pokemon or it looks like if if i was challenged to draw something that wasn't that but absolutely was that that's what i would make um but quickly within 15 minutes of playing i like kind of forgave that like i didn't really have that loyalty to say oh no they're they made cute creatures that look too much like Pokemon. I'm mad about it. Yeah. I was not mad at all. They, they're they very wonderfully animated. They look very colorful. They feel alive and their animations are doing a lot of things. If you build a hot tub for them, they'll like climb in and like uh, get their like health up and like just like relax in there. If you build a... Uh, If you build a patch of land that is going to be served for farming purposes, it let the water Pokemon will come up and they'll start watering it for you. There'll be a uh, Pokemon who's like uh, a deer with antlers and they'll just start chopping down trees with their antlers and they go to work for you. So these pals are assisting you with tasks that you would normally have to do yourself. So once you start building up your base and you say collect wood, you don't do that for the entire game. You build up a roster of pals of Pokemon that will collect the wood for you and they'll be working and tending to your crops and and do all sorts of things and and you feel like you're part of this community whereas in pokemon games you had a team and like oh these are my five or six pokemon on my team and and i like them and and in in other games you could start to ride them and have them walk alongside you like pikachu is always at your at your buddy's side and you can do that here and you have a flying pokemon where it's like oh this one i can latch onto like a like a glider and then you breath of the wild like glider around on them and it and you could ride this one and you can turn this pokemon who breathes fire into a flamethrower and you pick them up and you just start like shooting flames at everything there's mechanics that are tied to the pals and special abilities that they each have attacks and skills that you could use to heal you or assist you in different ways and and it's just it got me adam and i'm ashamed to say it because of all these like negative stigmas that are around it and pal world is a good solid game it's it's crazy it's co-op you can play with other people and build up a little town it's it's wild you know it's it's interesting i i i i haven't played this game obviously um and I have mixed feelings just on the surface, like you talk about, like it's it's the clear knockoff. There's a lot of shit in here that is just aped from Nintendo. But I also got to say, oh, that I'm glad somebody did this. I'm glad that somebody took something that only Nintendo has done. Yeah. And they've done it better in a lot of ways. And I think that'll push Nintendo. I, yes. I think the, the the fact that this game is online co-op and it's not a broken ass online, like it, it's like it, the way online's supposed to be, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the stuff that you talk about that is like, it's that foundation Pokemon stuff, 
but it's brought into the next generation. There are so many Nintendo games and so many Nintendo mentalities that we've been waiting and begging, begging for Nintendo to push into this next generation or even this current generation in a lot of respects. And while, like you said, Pal World feels kind of dirty, it feels kind of scummy in a lot of ways. Um, I'm glad that somebody said, you know what? Nintendo's not the only one who can do it because I feel like that'll push Nintendo. I hope that that will push Nintendo because we'd all like to see a Pokemon game do some of these things. And we'd all like to see the the Legend of Zelda do some of the stuff that like uh, Horizon does or Genshin Impact does. You know, it takes that foundation and that Nintendo formula and brings it truly into the way games can be now. And uh, I, as great as Nintendo is, as much as I love Nintendo, we all know that there are deficiencies there and they're stuck in the past a lot of the time. So I'm glad that there's a game like this that's that's poking the bear, uh, for better or for worse. Yeah, Game Freak and the Pokemon Company, like they they, they have, we want more out of the this franchise, and they say, okay, l- give us an open world, give us more Pokemon, just that are, you know, roaming around and doing things. And they had Pokemon Legends Arceus, um, where you would see, you know, Pokemon in in the background, and you walk up to it to begin a fight. And they kept that from us for decades as far as like fighting against the iteration, fighting against making it bigger and better. And whether it's in the 2D space or 3D space, now we are getting more and more people fighting and saying, you know, we're going to have our pocket monsters and we're going to introduce new ideas. There's something called Cassette Beasts, which is a, a great game. There's something called Monster Sanctuary which is a 2D Pokemon-esque excellent game. There are mods out there. There are other games that are taking the Pocket Monster idea and doing more with it. And Pal World's just decided to do a crafting meets Pokemon open world. And honestly, they they created a good special sauce here. They they the the joy of it comes in the melding. It doesn't do the Pokemon thing like incredibly well and it doesn't do the crafting thing that's incredibly different but when they come together and you see the pokemon helping you with the crafting and then you craft things to assist your pokemon to unlock like other abilities where you can ride them and use them as weapons this is where the magic is and they have something here and it's it's excellent it's janky you know a lot in a lot of ways there's a recent report that came out that says that Pocket Pair, the developer, is desperate with all the money that they're making, all the sales, and now uh, Xbox supporting them and it being on Game Pass. They are hiring everyone. Mm. They're like, we need people to help us. You know, we had a flash in the pan and we're trying not to let it burn out. So they're fighting kind of an uphill battle with the backlash and all of that. They weren't prepared for the success. So we'll see. I don't know where Pal World will go in the future. Um, the one last thing I wanted to say about it is they're not stingy with the leveling up and creating new things. There's always something new to do on the crafting side to unlock. And there's new Pokemon in different areas of the world and exploration. And putting that together, you have, you know, the rare Pokemon and then this, oh, this new thing I can craft. And they're hitting you from both sides where it feels fresh every 10, 20 minutes you're doing something and it's it's keeping it vibrant it's keeping it exciting so i have to recommend pal world it's it's so weird i never thought that i would say it that if you're a fan of either genre you should play very cool that's pal world uh is this game pass i feel gross yeah it's game pass it is on game pass and you could buy it as well i think it's 30 or 40 dollars uh spot check that here but yeah all right. Well, we're going to wrap up this episode so that Antonio can take a shower for recommending Pal World. Yeah. But before we do that, it's the caboose where we give a recommendation to you about something we've been enjoying outside of the world of video games that we think you might like. What do you got? Oh, I see this on your list and I'm very excited if this is what I think it is. Yes. So for those of you who don't know, Donald Glover, a.k.a. Childish Gambino, uh, he is uh, part of the duo in the new Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is a it's a show on Amazon Prime. 
and it is co oh, I'll forget the name of his co-star who's part of Pen15 um, but Mr. and Mrs. Smith is a I don't know why they call it Mr. and Mrs. Smith but they're basically a, a couple who are spies who pretend to be husband and wife and that is you know what the Brad Pitt Angelina Jolie movie was and all that but now in a show form so this is more of a they call it a comedy drama, but it's really kind of like an action. Um, it, it, it's kind of like an action, tongue-in-cheek uh, take on a spy thriller, which kind of hits the right tones of um, spy craft and, and mystery um, with these characters that are interacting each, with each other and trying to conform to this new reality. Her name is Maya Ur Ureskin who plays uh, Jane in, in there, as well as Donald Glover plays John. And it's it's good. It's good. I've only watched the first episode. Everything gets three episodes from me until I can fully recommend something. That's usually when shows hit their stride. But I love Donald Glover and everything that he does, really. Yeah. And I think that it's going to be... Um, it's going to be a, a contender for one of my new shows. It has critical success and the people who watch it have some up, some down. So Mr. And Mrs. Smith. I love that movie. Show. I'm excited Amazon to watch Amazon original. I, yeah, I want to see, uh, I want to see Troy. I hope Abed has a cameo. Troy somewhere. And Abed. Oh my God. Did you hear communities having is supposedly going to do their movie? Oh yeah. Oh six yeah. Seasons in a movie. Oh so exciting. Six seasons in a movie. All right. My recommendation is also going to be something you can watch on your screen. I finally took Antonio's advice and I got Hulu. I cut the cord from Direct TV. We're on Hulu now. You had Direct TV? I know. Good lord, Dad. Painful Adam. man. Painful. And one of my favorite things to do is watch dumb action movies. And I've found okay. a few dumb action movies. I sit, I sit my family down, we have dinner, we watch a dumb action movie that dad recommends. Some of them are winners, some of them are called Moonfall, but I have three dumb action movies that I will quick recommend to you that you can watch on Hulu. First one, White House Down, starring Channing Tatum and um, uh, um, Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is the president, and it's Die Hard in the White House. Channing Tatum is a guy who's trying to get a job as a Secret Service agent in the White House as terrorists attack, and he has to save Jamie Foxx. And it's absolute carnage and mayhem. Super good stuff. Very funny. Not not too heavy. You know, it's, it's, it's adequate for your family. That's White House down. Second one is called Geostorm. It's with Gerard <laughs> Butler. And this one is about there's a giant satellite in there's a giant space station out in space that's trying to save Earth from uh, global warming and superstorms. And of course, something goes wrong and the, the satellite ends up actually causing massive storms on Earth. And it's up to Gerard Butler to go up into space and to save everyone. Great stuff. Third movie, Skyscraper <laughs> starring The Rock. The Rock. I saw it and I was good. It the was Rock good. is an amputee ex-cop or special agent or something. And now he's doing security in the tallest building in the world. And terrorists take over. And he has to save his family. And his wife is Nev Campbell from Scream. And she's hot. And The Rock with his robotic leg that. have to climb to the top of the skyscraper and save everyone. All three of these movies are super dumb and super fun and I highly recommend that if you like dumb loud movies you watch White House Down you watch Skyscraper and you watch Geostorm all available on Hulu it's a super fun dumb time I am so glad that you're recommending all this trash so I don't have to oh some man of it is good I Gerard Butler and Jason Statham and all these guys who like uh who make these action movies that are just like give me an excuse they're, to take my shirt off and be in an explosion and they're doing you know the lord's is. work is what yeah. they're doing um, i hear you but yes don't watch moonfall because that movie is straight up garbage <laughs> that's gonna do it for this episode of mega dad's live we're so glad that you watched or listened subscribe to the channel right here on youtube youtube.com slash mega dads like the video Give us your comments. Did you watch Geostorm? Did you watch Gerard Butler save the world on a space station? 
Share Would it in you the like comments. Would you like to be eaten off of? Yeah, we want to know. Would you rather eat off of a butt or a wiener? Leave us a comment. And what would you eat? And what would you eat? Man, only on Mega Dads. Only on Mega Dads. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.